Hello and welcome to my book review of Mastering Click Sense. So before we begin, I have to let you guys know that I was asked to do this review by the authors. That said, what I'm going to give you is as fair and balanced review as possible. So let's begin. So weighing in at almost 500 pages, it's a hefty book split into three key parts. The first handles the click management console, the QMC, and also transitioning from click view to click sense as a developer. The second is scripting and expression building. And the third and final part is all about extensions, which was always going to be my main focus. Now the book does cover a lot and it's mainly in reference format for the first two parts. So what I mean by that is it's just giving you examples rather than talking you through a fictional project from start to finish. The final part, you do build an extension in its entirety though. One of the things that confused me at first was who the book is for. And I had to double check this. And the book says basically everybody. So experienced click view people making the move to sense, new sense people, and also web developers hoping to increase their knowledge of click. Now, I've got to be honest here, I don't think the book is the best choice for new users to sense because of how it's organised and the amount of time spent on the basics of developing Click. But I'll talk more about that later. Now, from an experienced Click developer who's also got experience in Sense, I like the way we dive straight into the QMC or the Click Management Console. Now, for me, that's where a lot of the power of Click Sense has over Click View and is where the focus really needs to be. So leveraging the security roles around the business needs is definitely what developers need to focus energies on when transitioning from ClickView to ClickSense. It's where the power is. Unfortunately, the middle section dealing with scripting and expressions I thought was a little too basic. Even if you're a newbie, it wasn't laid out as an entire project from start to finish, rather co code snippets, which unfortunately I found an error in. Um, but there was not given in a lesson format the user had to read rather than do and learn, so that could easily be missed by the user as well. Actually, at one point, I did recall in horror, um, advice around subroutines being highly recommended and used a lot, although I think what there was more due to the context example given, and perhaps it could have been a bit clearer what the author meant, so on reflection, I sort of let that go. Slight panic over. Um, even though it was basic, I did enjoy skimming through just to see if there's anything new um, I could pick up on here and there, and there was things that got my brain ticking, so that's all good. Um, the final section is where my main focus was, developing extensions. Now, to be honest, I had to come back to this section quite a few times because there's just so much to take in. There's so much theory to work through. Perhaps too much information, I'm not sure. I guess time will tell on that one. But I had to keep coming back and reread information time and time again, trying to get it to sink in. Now, the example was a little hard to follow as well, at times for me at least. Um, the book used code snippets and it wasn't always clear where they needed to go. So there was one instance where we talked a lot about a particular file and there were lots of code snippets to do with that file. And then we had a new code snippet that we were talking about. But it wasn't for this file. It was for a different file, although that wasn't mentioned. So what I had to do is build up a system where I followed the book, but I also had the full, complete, final code downloaded from the Pike support site, and I had to cross-reference everything just to make sure as I was developing it, I was putting things in the right place. When programming a language I'm not totally confident in, what I like to do is a little bit of code, check to see if it's working, and do a little bit more, keep repeating that process of very, very small bits and checking. Unfortunately, the book didn't really lend itself to this in the most part, so I had to try and do it myself as much as I could, which was difficult because you didn't always have the what it should look like um, sort of in the book, so you had to sort of try your best. So also, I did find a further mistake in the code, which as an experienced developer, I can work around. Sometimes that can help you actually learn the code a little bit more when you're trying to fix a fault. Let's be honest, it's hard for every mistake to be caught first time, so I'm sure the future revisions will remove these. However, you do get out what you get in, what you put into these things, and persisting with the lessons means I did feel my understanding of this area has improved, which can only be a good thing. So what you have here is really three books for the price of one. It's certainly worth reading with enough good information here to warrant the money. So thanks for watching. I hope you find this book review useful and I'll see you all again soon. Take care.